Hey guys, it's John with Ideaform 3D, and today I'm going to show you a cool optimization plugin for 3ds Max called Polygon Cruncher. So this plugin can optimize a really dense 3D mesh and um, kind of preserve the shape really well, but also preserve the UVs and textures, which is pretty cool. So this tool is called Polygon Cruncher. And it's a tool made by Moo Tools. It looks like they have this plugin for 3ds Max, Maya, Lightwave. Um, they also have a standalone that works really well. It performs really nicely. So it says here, Polygon Cruncher is a 3D optimization software for architecture, video games, CAD, 3D printing, etc., and provides solutions for simplifying your 3D meshes. So let's hop into 3ds Max. I have a really dense um, 3D object here. It's a starfish that I created uh, using photogrammetry. And as you can see, the polygon counts super high. It's 4.6 million polys. So we're going to use Polygon Cruncher to optimize this mesh and try to, try to preserve um, a lot of these details, but optimize it to a level that's a little bit little bit more manageable say if we're uploading it to Sketchfab or if we're going to use it for video game design or just wanting to optimize performance. So I'm going to start off by comparing the Polygon Cruncher modifier to 3ds Max's Pro Optimizer just to see if there's any differences or see if one performs better than the other. So I have a sphere here with a bunch of polys. Let's add Pro Optimizer to this guy and hit Keep Textures. And when you install Polygon Cruncher, it installs as a standalone and a modifier. So let's just add Polygon Cruncher. And same thing, keep textures and hit calculate. All right, so it says that our base poly count is 39,000 faces. So let's drop this to 1.5%, which drops it down to 590 polys. And do the same thing in Polygon Cruncher, 1.5 and that drops us to 590 faces. All right, at first, um, the, the wireframe looks pretty similar, but if we hop into shaded view here, you can start to see that uh, Polygon Cruncher did a little bit better of a job at kind of preserving the details and the shape of the mesh. Um, if you look at the shading, it just looks more like a sphere. You're not getting these weird um, smoothing group issues. And it just feels like it preserved the shape of that sphere a little bit better than Pro Optimizer did. Now, if we apply the checkers and kind of inspect the UVs, um, you can see both of these are struggling a little bit with the top. But when you look at the UVs, you can tell that Polygon Cruncher just did a better job at preserving the UVs and optimizing the mesh. Um, we're not getting these weird distortions right here. Um, and overall, the UVs just look a little bit more evenly spaced and we're not getting any of those little weird distortion marks. So I would say overall in terms of shape preservation and UV preservation, um, Polygon Cruncher is performing a little bit better than Pro Optimizer. All right guys, so let's try optimizing this Starfish Mesh and running it through Polygon Cruncher and just seeing how low we can get this mesh to and um, maybe bake a normal map at the very end. So first thing, I'm just gonna export this as an OBJ and I'm uh, gonna call it Starfish High Res and hit save. All right, guys, um, so Polygon Cruncher also installs as a standalone, so you get this standalone app and this little dialog pops up and you can hit optimize a file and we'll go ahead and load in that Starfish High Res. So here's the uh, standalone um, for Polygon Cruncher, and as you can see, it loaded our Starfish um, high res mesh in here. And it has a lot of different cool settings like viewing the model in wireframe, flat shade, 
Um, we have a lot of the same settings that we had in the modifier panel in 3ds Max. It also has a materials tab so you can manage your textures and materials that way. Um, so same thing, I'm just going to keep all of these settings default since it does such a good job and just turn on keep UV textures and hit compute optimization. All right, guys, that took about a minute. Um, but now that it's calculated, we have a little slider and we can actually um, decimate the mesh with this slider moving to the left. Or we have a little number box here where we can actually enter our target poly count or vert count. So let's try, let's just try typing in 50,000 and hit enter. All right, it just dropped our mesh um, from 4.6 million faces to 50,000. And as you can see, it does an awesome job at preserving the shape and doing its best to preserve the details, which is super cool. So depending on what you're doing, um, this little number box is really useful because say you're doing an iPhone game where things really need to be optimized for Unreal or Unity, you could type in 500 and get a really optimized low poly mesh and then use the high res mesh to bake a normal map. Um, say you want it a little bit higher res for like an Xbox game, you can go to two, let's try 2500 and we get a little more detail or say um, you want to use it for a film or an advertisement or a visual effects animation and you want a little more detail with like a normal map, we could crank this up to whatever, 8000 or even higher. So being able to dynamically change the target resolution right here is super fast and super useful because you can just dial in the poly count for whatever you might be doing. Um, so for this example, let's try 5,000. Let's import our low res mesh from Polygon Cruncher. We put in that number 5,000 polys and Polygon Cruncher did an awesome job at trying to preserve the shape of our starfish here. Along with that, um, if we apply an unwrap UVW, you can see that Polygon Cruncher did its best to not only optimize the mesh, but preserve the UVs. So this is super useful because if we apply the original texture from our high res, it should work on our low res as well. So as you can see, it struggled in some areas. It didn't do a super clean job, but to be able to optimize a 4 million poly mesh and preserve the textures that well is really impressive. So as last steps, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into this low res into uh, the UV editor and select all our polys here and just create a new UV set for this low res. So I'm going to do flatten mapping. This is the automatic unwrapping tool in 3ds Max. So now we kind of just have automatic UVs. So you can see we lost our texture. But what we're gonna do here is I'm going to export this as low UVs. So now we have this low res mesh that Polygon Cruncher optimized with new UVs that are a little bit cleaner. And we're going to use the high res to bake that texture to these new UVs that we have on the low res mesh. So the way we're gonna bake those maps from the high res to this new low res mesh is with an awesome free program called Xnormal. Um, you can download it by visiting xnormal.net and it's used for um, baking normal maps and it's a great tool for transferring maps from a high res to a low res with a new UV space. So let's open up Xnormal and under high definition meshes, we're going to add our high res mesh. And I'm going to add a base texture and that's going to be our starfish texture. And under low definition meshes, I'm going to add our starfish low with our new UVs um, from 3ds Max. 
And under baking options, I'm going to export this to the desktop and bake out a normal map, which is gonna grab all our details from our high res mesh. You can also do a height map if you wanna do displacement. But let's just do a normal map and our base texture map and hit generate maps. All right, so it just baked our normal map, which is all our details and our color map. All right guys, so I got the normal map and the new color map loaded onto our low poly. And if we compare the two, we can see now we have a really high resolution source mesh that's 4.6 million polys. But now we have an optimized lower res mesh that's 5,000 polys that has a normal map baked from the high res mesh and a color map. So yeah, now we have a really optimized starfish mesh um, with a normal map and a color map from the photogrammetry data. But now this is a lot lighter on the machine in case we wanna upload to Sketchfab or use it for video game design or just want a better performing 3D asset that still has a lot of the details. So um, I hope this has been a useful video. I think this could be a really nice workflow in case you're optimizing meshes for video game design um, or Sketchfab, or just trying to take a high-res 3D model and being able to manage it better. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and definitely check out Polygon Cruncher when you get a chance. All right, guys. Hope you have a great day. Bye.